today we are going to review how to run the tire balancer, how to get the tire mounted up on the balancer, how to get the correct measurements and get the machine running so you can balance the wheel and tire assembly. First thing we need to do is take a look at our wheel. So this is our wheel and tire assembly we're going to balance. Now this is the front side of the wheel and tire assembly and so this is going to go out when we mount on the machine and we got to make sure that we identify the uh, flat flange where the hub of the car would normally mount up. And this is going to mount against our uh, tire balancer. And so uh, it mounts right here. It needs to sit perfectly flat, and the two parts need to be perfectly centered together so the machine can balance the tire. But a lot of times when we get these initial readings of five, or seven, or eight ounces out of balance, what's actually wrong is the tire is not mounted correctly. So we want to go over that, that uh, procedure in detail of how to get it mounted up correctly. Now, on an aluminum wheel like this, most of the time you can tell the front from the back. But just make sure, on some of the steel wheels, it's not quite as obvious, uh, but take the time to make sure you get this surface that's going to be mounted against the hub of the car, and that needs to mount against our machine. So the very first thing we have to do is we have to select the correct cone uh, to match our wheel. And so the cones are stored here on the left side of the tire balancer, and you need to find the cone that will slip into the back of the wheel and fit correctly. So here's our wheel. Our cone needs to fit this hole in the middle of the wheel correctly to hold the wheel and the tire assembly centered on the balancer. And uh, you're going to get a cone and you're going to here. And that one fits maybe just a little bit too small. See if we can find one that fits better. So we'll go to the next size up, which is this one right here. And the cone goes about halfway in. The wheel side's about halfway up on it. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So we're going to use this cone to uh, balance our wheel and tire. Now we have our cone selected. We're going to set up the wheel and tire on the tire balancer spindle. Now the spindle you need to really take care of, it is the precision measurement part of the tire balancer. So we just want to make sure we take care of it, we're careful with the threads on it, and we don't drop the wheel on it. So we want to make sure this spring is on here, it should be on very first, and then our cone, alignment cone is going to go on here with the taper facing out, so the wheel can slide up on the taper, so that goes on. Then we're going to take our wheel and tire assembly, and that's going to go on next. And we want to try to set that onto the cone and not drop that on the threads of the spindle. Now, if we go ahead and take our hold down nut and put it on next, it's going to run up against the cone, and then our wheel tire assembly is not going to be uh, mounted properly. So, we need this spacer. So this spacer is going to go in front of our hold down nut. It's going to give the cone room to slide through the wheel so that everything works out correctly for us here. I always like to spin it backwards, tighten it down, and you can take a look at that. That looks nice and round. So we check and make sure that everything is spinning in a nice circle and it looks like it's mounted up good. Now that we have the wheel tire mounted on the tire balancer correctly, we've got the tire spins nice and in a circle. It doesn't go up and down, it doesn't roll back and forth, it just rotates in a nice circle. We're ready to go on setting up the tire machine. Uh, when you're doing a set of tires, if all the tires are the same, wheel and tire assemblies are the same, uh, you just have to put these measurements in once. But every time you switch from one tire to a different offset wheel and tire, a different width, a different diameter, you need to put these measurements in um, again. So we're going to go through them. There are three measurements that you have to go through and you have to get them correct, otherwise the machine can't tell you the right information. The first measurement the tire machine needs is the offset of the wheel and tire to the machine itself. So we can figure out how far away the tire is depending on the offset of the wheel. So, Offset is pretty easy. There's a measurement tool right here on the inside of the machine. It reaches out, it touches the flat part of the wheel where the wheel weights are going to mount, and you read off of this arm the distance out to the wheel. This one happens to say 61. We're going to simply come back over here, push the first of the three measurement buttons, we're going to type in 61, and that measurement is ready to go. The second measurement we need is the width of the wheel. Now you're gonna have to physically measure the width of the wheel and you do it from the edges of the wheel that are flat and parallel to each other. Uh, you're measuring the metal wheel width across and on the side of the machine here, there should be a pair of calipers. 
These calipers are pretty easy to use. They have a scale here on the side, and the opposite arm has a pointer, and it points at the proper size. So we're going to take these, and we reach across the wheel, hold them in place, and you read across the top what it says, and because I'm doing it upside down, it should be down, down here in front of you, uh, it says six and a half. So we will enter our six and a half inch wheel width. We're gonna push the second button. We're gonna put in 6.5. Uh, and that measurement is done and ready to go. Our third and final dimension is the diameter of the wheel. This comes from the tire size on the sidewall of the tire. Uh, you need to look at the sidewall of the tire and the final number after the R for radial, and most of our tires because they're radials, uh, will be the tire diameter, or the wheel diameter. And uh, that is the third number you need to put in. So you simply push the third button, and this one happens to be a 15 inch wheel. Type in 15, and we're ready to go for our initial spin of the tire, and so the machine can tell us how out of balance it is. All right, after the machine stops and the tire comes to a complete finish, we have two squares. These two squares are reading out the amount of weight we need to add to the wheel um, and also where that light spot is where we add the weights. This, uh, these numbers here are gonna move as you spin the tire and when it gets to zero, that's gonna indicate to us that the light spot in the tire wheel assembly is perfectly straight up and down. And if you look at this one, this one's ready to go on this side. We're gonna add a weight right here on the very top, and then we'll rotate around and do the other side. So now we pick out the correct amount of weight, and we make sure that in the weight that we pick out, we get one that is the correct type of weight. A steel wheel is gonna need a weight with a back, a round back, and an aluminum wheel is gonna need a weight with a flat back, like this one here. And usually the aluminum weights are painted to look kind of like aluminum. I always like to be on the opposite side of the wheel from where I'm hammering. Hammer it on, can we spin it one more time, and we see what we get. We can see that, that left side of the tire is done, and the right side of the tire still needs one and a quarter ounces of weight. All right, with our first side done, we're gonna look at our second side, and we're gonna rotate our tire so we come to zero. We're gonna stop, and it gets, you gotta go slow as you get towards zero. The increments become very small. Get our other tire weight on here, one and a quarter ounces. Get it hammered on. We do our final spin, and if both sides come out zeros this time, then we are ready to take this tire off the balancer and start on the next one. Here's a more detailed look at the uh, buttons we use to set the size of the tires. The first one on the top, is the uh, offset button. The one below that is the width, and the last one is the diameter. Uh, you simply push them, and then you can enter the correct value. And once you've put in three decimal places, it should move on to the next one. And so we'll move on to width, and we'll put in the correct size for that. And the last one will be.